Salaries have taken a massive hit during the lockdown, but are they returning to normal? Well, Mike Schussler, an economist at economist.co.za, has been working with BankServe Africa to analyze take-home pay in South Africa. And new data for September 2020 shows that salaries might be returning back to normal. Mike, thanks very much for joining us. Please, could you take us through some of the high-level findings in this data? Well, we saw a big dip in both the number of payments that we estimate went through the system. And also, we know that the volume of payments, in other words, the cumulative uh, uh, number every month, we saw a very big decline. It was about a month after April, which says to me that uh, salaries are a little bit of a lagging indicator. But May and June salaries really declined drastically. And we also saw that later on from the taxman. And we had about a 35% decline in the amount of salaries paid and the amount of people. And it was quite scary, actually. And then we saw it getting better, uh, probably partly because of the temporary employment relief scheme, but also, I think, um, people started returning to work in the private sector uh, and their salaries were able to be paid again. And that's why we only saw the improvements in July and then another improvement in August and now near normal in, in, in September. But just to put a, 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 a number on that whole, if you assume that about 70% of the, 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 the salary is private sector and the total salaries declined with 35%, it means that roughly at the worst stage, 50% of the salaries that the private sector got paid wasn't being paid. And this is a very, very, very um, bad situation for the country. Um, there's no way that we can uh, put it, uh, you know, in any nice terms, bluntly put, it um, destroyed confidence, it really hurt people. Uh, yes, the UIF came to the party uh, 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 and uh, was pain, was a bit of a delay, is still now. But the bigger picture, I think we also have to acknowledge is that there has been a massive improvement and part of that improvement is the delayed TERS, which is being paid. Uh, part of the improvement is that people are not paying their pensions at the moment because companies feel maybe they should give people money now because they need to survive now. Um, and their partners may have lost their jobs and stuff like that. So we, we, we saw that as, a, 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 as something that's going on. And uh, we only had a, 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 a sort of 1% decline now in, in, in um, September. And in nominal terms, it was up with 0.7% in total, um, leaving out the impact of inflation and, 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 and tax and everything like that. It probably means about a 4% decline on a year ago. But obviously, there were still temporary employment relief payments. So we will in the future still see a bit of a decline. But the big news I think for now is, we'll talk about the future now, but I think for now, it does look like things got very close to normal again. Maybe not quite normal as it was before the lockdown, but um, I think the worst is behind us. Uh, we'll see good improvement in the GDP. We'll obviously see the best GDP numbers ever but from such a low base that has to make uh, that happen. Um, it will take us a few years to get back to normal proper. But here's the thing, you know, I think um, the, the people in big firms um, and the people, because that tracks big, and, and people in government probably didn't have the same sort of hit that the people at the bottom, smaller firms, and certainly... Even in our index, we can pick up who's a casual and who's weekly paid. The weekly paid got hit quite hard, but the casuals got hit extraordinarily hard. Um, at stages, there was over 40% of the casual payments were missing. So you can well imagine a person packing a toll, being paid through AdCorp or whoever. Uh, all of a sudden, there's no job, there's no payment, and they are 
just not getting any sums of money. So then somebody applied for uh, the employment relief and it may have taken a month or three for them to get any. So that piled on later, but you can see that it was the poorer part of our uh, population and also the smaller firms uh, where the hits took place. So when we combine our data and what I'm hearing that the CRAM, NIDS are doing um, the, uh, uh, at UCT and Stellenbosch and with the labor force surveys and so on, we know that, that uh, a lot of the people got seriously hurt and even in bigger firms, but I think the big difference is government had hardly any impact and the private sector had a very big impact. And in the private sector, the bigger firms had a lesser impact. They have more, uh, let's put it, stability. They have more reserves. That's easier for them to lend from the banking system than it is for the medium-sized companies. And wherever companies could save on the casual labor, they saved. And that's what hurt and probably um, brought inequality up again. You know, it's it's... Uh, when people don't have jobs, you, you actually increase inequality. And David, I think that's my story uh, for, you know, the, the amount of people and the amount of money. So Mike, just in terms of the status quo now, so there seems to have been some kind of reversion back to the mean in terms of salaries, as you've indicated. But how do you see things developing in future? You mentioned the CRAM survey, which showed that there have been approximately 2 million jobs lost. And as you noted, that's disproportionately affected low income earners and small businesses. How do you see salaries and also the, the broader job market developing from here? I'm glad to report that for the first time in September, we saw a massive increase in casuals. We saw a bit of an increase or a, let's put it a much smaller decrease in August, which indicates that's probably the July payments for these casuals. So we, we, we've seen them recover, which is actually very good news. Not fully recovered, but for the first time, we've seen a year-on-year -year positive number in, in that category in September. So I think we're going to get a much fuller picture in the months ahead. Um, and that picture is very likely to show uh, a, a, a lower salaries overall. Uh, we, get, uh, we, 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 we get over the distortion that the temporary employment relief scheme has put through the system. And I would suggest that we're going to see about a 5 or a 10% decline in the number of formal sector jobs. And for the private sector, that probably means about an 8 to maybe 14% uh, 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 reduction, uh, because we know about 30% of our uh, uh, salaries that we track are government, and they're not going to have that impact. I think what we're going to see as well is a recovery in the other week category, which is the weekly one. Um, I already see much less of a drop from last year, um, which is a good sign. And that's typically like your chefs, your bus drivers, all those sort of people, obviously like mechanics too. So I think um, both those weaker categories have improved tremendously. I think we'll get a much clearer picture of the actual salary cuts that have been taking place on the monthly ones. Maybe not the October data, but probably by January at the latest. Um, but I, I've got a very sneaky suspicion a lot of the salary cuts have been hidden because of the weaker or the, the lower income groups being hit hardest with this whole process. And um, I really think that we will see uh, uh, that. But I also think we will see the numbers increase again, and we'll probably settle somewhere between 5 and 10% below where we were a year ago. And I think the uh, big number for me is going to be the November one, I think, um, because we've heard that the T TERS is, 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 well, we know it stopped on the 21st of September. I've spoken to practitioners, um, and they've inform me that there's still numbers coming through. And I think it should be over by October, but there's no guarantee. But that's why I think the real uh, proper number without too many distortions should be the November number. 
And that should have a 5 to 10% um, decline in people, I think, and a decline in, um, you know, the total pay. So we'll have to see how that works, what it's going to be. Obviously, it's a bit of a guessing game. But as I said, the, the casuals have bounced back quite well. Um, it doesn't mean uh, for them the crisis is over. They have to now make up some of this. But I think that's a, a little bit of good news. Um, but the fuller picture, yeah, that, that I think we'll still see a 5 or 10% overall reduction. And then we'll see that obviously improve over time as companies get going again, as uh, the, the losses uh, make way for new creations in, in the economy. So, Mike, can we turn now to public sector wages? What are you observing there? And we saw the finance minister last week indicating that his preference would be for there to be a freeze on government salaries, but that's up to the Ministry of Public Service and Administration. So how do you see that playing out uh, over the medium term? Well, let me give you a history here. We've seen um, the sort of average public service wage um, starting off, say, in 2001, when I have the data, around 20, 21, 22% above the private sector. It increased to where we were about 35% above the private sector. And then in the second quarter, because the private sector cut back, it went to 48% of the private sector. So uh, 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 not 48%, it means 148% of the private sector. So that their premium went from 20% up to close to 50%. It obviously will come down now, but it does tell you a story that we need the public sector to also come to the party and take some of the pain. You cannot expect uh, the private sector to take all the pain. It's time that the public sector also uh, is, uh, um, you know, pulled back. The problem I have that the government has um, is they signed an agreement, and that agreement means that they have to this year still give a salary increase. I, I have spoken to some of the unions involved, like the teachers' union, uh, SAO, the Afrikaans one, and uh, they explained to me that this is a, a, a legally binding thing. Government is not going to get away with this. In court, you know, you've signed it, it's very likely a court's going to decide on them. So I think some things that the minister's hoping for isn't going to happen. Now, then the next year, we're going to be in a different e era. Um, and that's where that tough negotiations, which economists are going to watch out for. But I think the best we can probably hope for is inflation minus increases. I don't think zero is on the cards. Um, there'll be hell to pay. Uh, and it, it will disrupt the economy. So I think it's going to be a cat and mouse game for a long time, David. But I think, you know, what we could hope for is that we have inflation minus 2% when we have relatively low inflation, say 3.5%, 4 4%. I've got an idea that that is something that we could negotiate for a period of, say, four or five years. And tell them there just isn't the money. They, they understand that. Many of them do. Um, but they can't go to their members with zero. So if you tell them, look, you're anyway getting 1% a year. If you stay in the government service, you go up 1% a year. Um, obviously, the guys on top fall out as they retire. Uh, and we're going to give you another percent or 1.5%, which sort of covers you. And you don't really get bitten that hard by inflation. And yes, you're going to feel a bit poorer, but it's not going to be that bad. I think that's the sort of route that I can see as a model route here. Uh, you asked if they're going to be able to freeze public wages. Well, no, I, I don't think so. I think what the best is, as what I've said to you, and for this year, it's a court case. There's no doubt that that's heading to court. Um, and I think you guys have done a lot of work as well over the years on, on, on wages and public wages, if I read your uh, 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 annual book. And, you know, in there, you can see that the government has been increasing their share of the wage, or, or the, the total wages in the country. 
And, uh, you know, a 66% increase is just not uh, a, a great thing for this country. It was just in, in 11 or 12 years, I think, um, was the data that I got from you guys was 66%. Uh, 66% um, for the total wage bill, uh, you know, just says to me that that is out of proportion what anybody else could get. So we have to... We, we can't do it in one year, but we've got to take that back down uh, where the private sector uh, uh, isn't crowded out and gets more and more and more money for what they do on the productive side of the economy, if I can call it that. So the, that's something I think we'll be tracking very closely. Um, yeah, I, I think also another thing uh, uh, that will happen now this year um, is is I think we're going to see a, a, a lot or in the next year. I think we're going to see very small increases for everyone until we get past this sort of one year from now, I see increases going back to sort of inflation levels. So I think it's going to take probably a good decade for the private sector to sort of, I won't say catch up, but get back to where the public service is about 20% premium. And you can argue for a small premium, maybe not even 20%, because you have a lot of teachers, nurses, doctors, judges, and the like. But I think in most countries' cases, it's not even 20%. It's probably 8 or 10%. Uh, there's also the fact that the government obviously gets... Uh, 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 you can't get fired from government unless you steal or something. It's not, you're not going to see government go bust. You see firms go bust. So there's a risk premium on the private sector. But that's where I think we're going to end up. We're going to see this next year very, very small increases, if not decreases, uh, for many in the private sector. And I don't see much increases. So I think we're going to be for a year or two well below the rate of inflation with our salaries. And government is, is, is definitely, you know, you've hit the nail on the head, is definitely going to have to do something. But zero is probably not possible. Thanks very much, Mike. It seems there will be some belt tightening for many years to come. The book that Mike mentioned in this video is the Socioeconomic Survey from the Center for Risk Analysis. Over 800 pages of data on the socioeconomy of South Africa. If you'd like to access some of this data through our website, you can do so by following the link in the description below to our 30 day free trial. You can access all of our information and reports there. Uh, please remember, like this video and also comment below. What has your experience been during the lockdown? Have you had an interruption to your income and do you see that coming back in the near future? That's it from me, David Ansara. Until tomorrow at 7 a.m., take care.